Bun venit la o nouă ediție a emisiunii Ziua se apropie. În minutele care urmează vă prezentăm selecțiuni dintr-un interviu realizat de colegii noștri de la Christians for Israel cu Leon Meyer, însuși președintele organizației Christians for Israel și cu Yehiel Evers, membru al comunității evreiești din Olanda, despre situația din Israel după atacul Hamas. Să-i urmărim! As Christians for Israel, we pay a lot of attention to what's going on in uh, Israel right now. We do that through our website, c4israel.org, but every now and then also we have these broadcasts like we have today. And today uh, I have two guests in my studio. The first one is uh, Leon Meyer, the chairman of Christians for Israel International. Welcome. Thank you. Second one is Yechiel Evers. You're a member of the Dutch community in uh, in the Netherlands, of course, the Dutch Jewish community. So you're sitting here as a Jew in a Christian studio uh, talking about Israel. So how did you look at the news in the past two weeks? It was very, very, very touching. The first few days of the, especially the first few days of the war, after the war broke out, were mm -hmm. very emotionally intense. Uh, we saw all those images which were really uh, uh, heartbreaking. Mm. Those were images uh, which we, uh, as the Jewish community, hoped, and as like the Western societies, like Dutch society, for example, has promised, like never again. Mm. And again, it happened. So it exactly. was very, very uh, emotional. Yeah, and Leon, you um, you also watch the news, of course, for yeah. the past two weeks. Um, <clears throat> what was your feeling about what happened? Well, first of all, a shock mm -hmm. that such a massacre uh, could take place, and then you know. Every day, the, the brutality of what happened uh, filters through the media into our house and to our, into our head. Mm. Uh, still, some kind of, how could it happen? Mm. So many deaths and, and so, so brutal yeah. uh, with the start of a new war, yeah. um, which is understandable. Israel has the right to defend itself and the, the hostages need to be freed. Uh, both of you have been living in Israel for a few years. Um, Leon, to start with you, you have lived there in the 90s, yep. uh, also during a clash. Uh, I lived there with my, with my family mm -hmm. uh, during the time we got four kids. Mm -hmm. We started with the, the Gulf War, the first Gulf War with the Scott missiles and, and having gas masks in, in sealed rooms. Mm -hmm. And later on uh, the bus bombings like in Jerusalem and the, the killing of Rabin. Uh, and all the terrorist attacks which, which followed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can imagine if you experience in the 90s, back in the 90s in Israel, all the, all the hostilities and all the violence that, you know, it feels maybe even more to you. It, it feels more, but this is so massive. Mm -hmm. um, there, it, may, it might sound strange, but you had the luck or, or, the, or not the luck to be in the wrong bus. Mm -hmm. Here, complete villages have been massacred, mm -hmm. um, which is so, you can't comprehend it. You never comprehend no. a terrorist attack, but this is so massive. Um, so I'm in contact with, with a lot of friends in Israel and get WhatsApp messages. Mm -hmm. uh, people are so in shock of what happened mm -hmm. um, and in fear what's going to happen. Yes. I mean, we all know that about 360,000 uh, conscripts went into the army, mm -hmm. but this is, just imagine, this is the son and the daughter of so many people. Yeah. And so we get, you know, messages Constant. from those fathers and mothers being concerned about mm -hmm. their, uh, their loved ones, being strong. They say they have to do this, we have to defend this country. But just imagine that your son and daughter is out there mm. um, with an uncertain future. Yeah. What about you, Yechiel? Because you also lived in Israel for a few years. Yeah. Um, last summer you came back to the Netherlands to live here, but you ha still have a lot of relatives and friends living there. Yeah, I, I've lived there also in the, in the 2000s mm -hmm. and uh, I have a lot of friends, uh, family, relatives who live there. So we're in constant contact yes. and... Um, is your family safe over there? Yeah, relatively they're safe, but like uh, two of my... Uh, of, of the in-laws of, uh, of our family have lost uh, mm. uh, relatives. So it's very close, but like, I mean, it's, it's a relatively small country, so everyone is affected by yeah. the murders and the, and the attacks which have happened. On the other hand, I see a lot of, um, um, I see the, the people in Israel are united and strong and they're helping each other. Mm. And you see, um, yeah, the spirits are up, yeah. so to say. What do you think is going to happen? 
Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, it seems they, they, they will go in, in, in Gaza, which is uh, a decision which they don't take easily, because like uh, um, if you look at the past, um, there are a lot of casualties always with this kind of uh, uh, operations. Mm -hmm. Um, and expectations are also that once they go into Gaza, uh, Hezbollah will seriously open uh, a second front and, um, and and attack Israel from the north. From the north, At yeah. the same time. And maybe that's also the reason that uh, Kiryat Shmona, the city in the north, is now evacuated, because they are concerned that uh, Hezbollah will also interfere? True. Uh, there has been several warnings from Hezbollah and by the way, Iran, mm -hmm. that they will open a second front if Israel is entering Gaza. Mm. Uh, so this is one of the reasons the, uh, the villages are being evacuated. Yeah. And by the way, the people are already living for two weeks in bomb shelters mm. in the north, uh, already preparing for uh, attacks by Hezbollah. What are you going to do in Geneva? The Geneva is the seat of the uh, UN Human Rights Council. Uh, plus uh, the International Red Cross. Mm -hmm. um, two organizations which we think should be very much involved in the hostage issue, releasing the hostages, the Red Cross getting access to the hostages, hostages to see if they are all right, mm -hmm. uh, and the international community, the UN, to uh, strive mm -hmm. for their release. Yeah, what are the UN and the Red Cross doing for the Israeli hostages in Gaza? <laughs> we think not enough. Uh, we think they can do uh, much more, mm -hmm. put much more pressure on uh, the international community. You know, if we know that Iran is funding Hamas, then let's press Iran that they tell Hamas to release the hostages. Mm -hmm. uh, so the international community should act. Uh, and this is a place to address the international community in Geneva. You're going to be one of the speakers at this sure. uh, demonstration. What are you going to say? I, I still have to make my speech, but uh, I want to, to point out, first of all, this is a war uh, uh, criminal act. Um, we have been silent in 4045, uh, and we promised one another that we will never be silent again. Mm. So this is, the, this is the time to speak up. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't speak up now, then you, you no. better remain silent forever. Yeah. Um, and, and don't think that this won't affect you. Mm. Uh, it starts it start with the Jews, uh, but the rest of the world is coming after that. Yeah. So we have to stand up. Yeah, Yechiel, it's mainly Christian organizations who are going to be there in Geneva. Um, and Leon just referred to the war. We were silent in the war. We don't want to be silent right now. How do you listen to that as a Jew? Yeah, I must say like the, the, the reactions and the, the um, all the support and even like messages, WhatsApp messages, but also financial support, other support, uh, media attention from within the uh, from uh, from within the Christian communities, really heartwarming, mm. and it really gives the Jewish community and me as a person like a feeling that we are not standing alone. How um, are you ever asked because you are standing up now for Israeli hostages? Are you ever being asked, why don't you stand up for the Palestinian children? Uh, very often. Mm -hmm. uh, people always think that you are choosing a side. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not choosing a side. I'm, uh, first of all, I read the Bible and I read, mm -hmm. I read about God's covenants with uh, the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. They are everlasting. So that's one thing uh, my focus is on. And then the other thing, uh, if I look to the conflict in the Middle East, I see people suffering. Mm -hmm. I see people suffering on the Israeli side, and yes, I see people suffering on the Palestinian side. The question is, who is causing the suffering? Mm -hmm. um, and I think the Palestinians had the very bad luck to have very bad leaders, not willing to, to, uh, to attain peace. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, I, 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 I feel sorry for people in uh, the Palestinian territories. Um, but most of the suffering is being caused by, by the unwillingness yeah. of their leaders to make peace. Yeah, how do you look at that? Do you ever get uh, that, that remark? You you look too much to Israel, don't forget the Palestinians? No, absolutely. It's very, very tragic, the situation of the children in Gaza. Mm. And, um, and 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 yeah, be, don't forget that um, they, they suffer. The people mm -hmm. in Gaza, the children in Gaza, they suffer under the rule of Hamas. And you see on, on social media, you see more and more, the last couple of days, you see Arabs, even from Gaza, from the West Bank, and uh, uh, throughout, actually, throughout 
the Middle East, you see them speak out loudly against Hamas terror, mm -hmm. against their own people. Yeah. So Which it's very, very similar. tragic, like yeah. the situation of the children of Gaza. Absolutely. And, yeah. And but now, if you look to the the uh, how Egypt is treating this conflict, mm -hmm. keeping the border closed, if people you from Gaza, yeah, if part. people from Gaza are willing to flee, mm -hmm. Egypt is prohibiting their flee. Mm. They can't get can't get nowhere. No. Why is Egypt not helping? So. Um, other Arab nations are also keeping this conflict uh, uh, ongoing. Yeah. It's very sad to see because this is, this is in line of, of like uh, the policy of many Arab countries. Like for example, the Palestinians in Syria, they don't have full civil mm. rights. Uh, I believe in Lebanon, the same situation. Mm. And you see Egypt now again uh, um, refusing to open the border. Yeah. Because that's what the world also forgets. Like uh, since uh, Israel left Gaza mm. in 2005, um, there's also a border with Egypt. Yeah. Egypt has kept, has kept the border closed because yeah. for the same reason as Israel has kept it closed. They don't want the terrorists. They want to, they're afraid yeah. for the terrorists in, yeah. in Gaza. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, you, Yechiel, because you're a Jew. You live in the Netherlands. You've lived in Israel, but now you do live here. What kind of uh, effect does the Jewish community in the Netherlands see from what's happening in, in Gaza? It has a very, very strong effect on, on uh, the local Jewish community and I understand from my context worldwide that actually you see the same picture everywhere mm -hmm. in all local Jewish communities. Each time there is a, there is a confrontation between uh, Hamas and Israel, you see uh, that there are the security concerns in the Jewish communities um, go up. Yeah. And um, to name a few examples, like last week, um, a week ago, we had a uh, demonstration in the middle of the center of Amsterdam, and um, uh, many people were wearing like uh, or a kippah uh, or You're Israeli flag. You're talking about the pro-Israel demonstration. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I'm talking about the pro-Israel demonstration. Yeah. <laughs> and um, um, it was like highly advised, like not to uh, uh, after uh, when leaving the demonstration, not to wear Israeli flags or like like uh, uh, obvious Jewish uh, uh, signs. Like, like the keep, Star of David. Or yeah, like actually, actually to hide them uh, mm -hmm. after leaving the demonstration because like they, they the, everyone knows like the authorities cannot guarantee the mm -hmm. security. A day later, the Jewish school was closed. On Friday was like the day Hamas has called for. A worldwide jihad, not only against Israelis, but like Jews everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so, because of security concerns, the Jewish schools in the, uh, in the Amsterdam, uh, um, uh, in the Amsterdam uh, Jewish community, yeah. were closed. Yeah. Like two days later, we got like in our uh, WhatsApp group of the neighborhood where we live, we got like a warning that uh, there was a guy who was going around and taking pictures of Jewish houses. Uh, That's two days, very close, huh? Very added, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so it, it surely has an effect on the, mm -hmm. the Jewish community. But are and you afraid when you No, I'm not afraid, no. But you're cautious. Yeah. Especially when you are, uh, yeah, you're cautious. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it's not only in the, in the Netherlands. I, we also heard about a Molotov cocktail thrown at the synagogue in Berlin. We yeah. also hear about a lot of demonstrations worldwide, pro-Palestinian demonstration, where um, the, they chant from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And we all know what the effect of that is. That's free of the Jews. So how does that affect you? Um, so, so personally, I'm not afraid, but like it makes you think about like uh, the, the, the societies where we, we live in. Mm -hmm. And it's not only a Jewish problem because like uh, we feel it now, but like it, it's um, what are they actually saying? I mean, they're supporting terrorism. Uh, we have all read like uh, uh, it was like this morning in the newspapers that even the, the Holocaust monument in Berlin had to be protected against like uh, 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 the pro-Palestinian. Uh, demonstrators mm. in Berlin. So we, we as societies in Europe, in the United States, in the, the Western societies, mm -hmm. need to think like uh, 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 where we stand now and how we got here mm. and how we keep up our promises never again. Yeah. Leon, uh, how is the media coverage, uh, like the mainstream media, how is that contributing to the fear of the Jewish communities worldwide? <laughs> I, I think this war is again also a media war. Mm. Um, and uh, the, the first few days we saw, I think, worldwide uh, a shock of what happened in Israel. Uh, people are acknowledging the massacre and the brutality which have taken place. And, and you know, still details are, 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 are coming to us. Um, so the first few days were 
were a kind of neutral mm -hmm. uh, observing what happened. But then um, it again became part of the conflict and it became uh, the Jews have asked for it or the Israelis have asked for it. They should have expected this. Mm -hmm. um, this is part of the conflict. And now all of a sudden it becomes, uh, you choose a side. Yeah, well, it changed, huh? It changed. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard to, um, to, to, to discern the facts of what happened and what is the opinion of the journalist. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, the, the, the situation with the hospital in Gaza, all media, all mainstream media, within seconds they followed the narrative of Hamas. Well, I think, first of all, you need to have some doubts about the narrative of Hamas, but mm -hmm. Israel uh, did shoot uh, a rocket at the uh, hospital. And then, you know, a day later, we had to conclude that probably it was a, uh, an Islamic Jihad rocket which failed and hit the, the parking lot of the hospital. Yeah, yeah. How do you look at that, uh, Yechiel? Yeah, it was like uh, very strange. I mean, it was like uh, it was just after a week long debate about the, the exact num number of babies which were uh, decapitated by Hamas, whether Biden had seen the pictures or not, whether the pictures were confirmed or not. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, the, the explosion at the hospital in Gaza occurred. And you see like within one minute, like mm -hmm. certain uh, uh, mainstream media just took over the narrative of Hamas. Um, which question? I mean, uh, whose narrative are you taking? Uh, are you are you accepting? I mean, it, I mean, it's a group of murderers, terrorists, rapists, yeah. Yeah. and that you believe within one minute. But like a story about pictures of uh, of, of 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 horrible pictures of of tortured and murdered babies. You ask so many questions long, about, yeah. and and mm -hmm. you want to know everything. You want to have everything confirmed before even writing about yeah now many people all over the world are watching this broadcast and they're wondering uh you know i'm watching the news i'm watching the christians for israel broadcast but i have no clue whatsoever what can i believe and what not do you have any advices for them locally i know like uh, <laughs> uh, uh one side which really likes uh, um, puts a lot of effort in, um, in, in, in presenting news fact-based, both, both sides, like uh, mm -hmm. uncomfortable facts on both sides, but like really neutral. So try to find your local, first of all, uh, follow Christians for Israel. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure like internationally, if you have uh, yeah. also like a, a, a blog. Yeah. Uh, try to find your local or international uh, website or source, which, which you know is like a f uh, fact based yeah. fact based yeah. yeah and maybe also follow the israeli news do you follow yeah. the israeli news I follow the, I think one of the things is Times of Israel, uh, mm -hmm. which I follow every morning. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, how I wake up, uh, checking what's, what's on there. Um, and, and besides, Israel is a democracy. Mm -hmm. So in Israel, there are different voices. So it's not a propaganda machine of uh, some uh, one sided uh, uh, source. So if you look to Israeli news, you see a democracy, mm -hmm. a vivid democracy with pros and cons, uh, and not hiding any of the, the bad stories. Also criticizing the government. Also criticizing know. the government at yeah. this moment yeah. even. So that's one thing to, to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, we as Christians for Israel International try to, uh, to help people, to, mm -hmm. to uh, sort out the, the facts, um, and we help them try to uh, comprehend what's happening. Yeah, is it worth it? Because we see so loads of negative information of uh, about Israel coming to us and we are like this small little David in a big world. Um, just a, a few hours ago I spoke with someone who said uh, you have several people, one who is fighting the, the negative media and, and trying to correct the media. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's if God has called you to do that, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, and otherwise, uh, try to find the channels which give you the right information mm -hmm. and use that information to pray or to take action. Mm -hmm. um, you can be so f filled with neg 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 negativity, negativity yeah. about what you see in the news, uh, the better is to turn it into something positive and stir in concrete like, like a prayer. Mm -hmm. um, and watch out for everything you hear. Yeah. yeah, let's do that because I know that you're prepared uh, to yep. read a portion of the Bible. You prepared Psalms 12, right? Right. God's word is, is uh, very actual uh, mm -hmm. for every situation we live in. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll read what's, what it says. It's a media war, but God knows. 
Psalm 12 for the choir director upon an eight-stringed lyre, a psalm of David. Help, Lord, the godly man ceases to be, for the faithful disappear from among the sons of men. They speak falsehood to one another, with flattering lips and with a double heart they speak. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips, the tongue that speaks great things, who have said, with our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own, who is Lord over us? Because of the devastation of the afflicted, because of the groaning of the needy, now I will arise, says the Lord. I will set him in the safety for which he longs. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace on the earth, refined seven times. You, O Lord, will keep them. You will preserve, preserve him from, his gener from this generation forever. The wicked strut about on every side, when vileness is exalted among the sons of men. Mm. So the words of the Lord are the pure words, that we know uh, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we're going to pray soon, I will ask you to pray. Yep. Yechiel, uh, past two weeks, you as an observant Jew, how did you pray for Israel? Uh, first of all, for the return of the, uh, uh, of the hostages. Yeah and the, the, the recovery of the, the wounded mm. and also of the, the, the bereaved families like uh, that at some point they will find like uh, rest, like an overall, like the, mm. there will be shalom for, for Israel, but yeah. for all nations in the world. Yeah. Can you pray with us? I will. Dear Lord, Father in heaven, we thank you that we can address you in all our agony and pain and sorrow and put before you the pain of your people Israel. We ask your comfort for all those who mourn. And we ask that you will be with all the hostages in the places where they are. You can reach them, you can be with them. And we pray your word, Lord, that you will keep them, that you will be their Savior. And we also ask you to guide us in the actions we can take. Give us wisdom, give us discernment, what to say, when to act, when to pray. Lord, we thank you that we are not alone, that you see us and help us, and that you are the mighty one of Israel. And we ask you to show us that again, the mighty one of Israel, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Leon Meyer. Thank you, Yechiel Evers. Once again, thank you for watching and goodbye. Emisiunea Ziua se apropie, se încheie aici. Vă mulțumim pentru atenție și vă dăm o nouă întâlnire săptămâna viitoare la aceeași oră. Sunt Codruța Burghelea, vă spun la revedere și Dumnezeu să vă binecuvânteze!